So Hired has been in love with tech for a long time, and technology is important, but of course chalk is a technology. So we need some technology, but if our goal was to increase the amount of chalk on campus, we'd all think that was a little silly. So technology is a tool, not a strategy. Our strategy is to increase student learning. So as technology began to be more pervasive, especially in the classroom, I was seeing a lot of really bad PowerPoint and a lot of students sleeping in class. And so it occurred to me that if you were going to sit in the dark and watch a screen, you could do that at home. And so this idea of the inverted or the flipped classroom, uh, we first started thinking about this in the early 2000s. And again, it was something that technology actually made this whole thing possible. But the idea was that if you had this technology, then you didn't have to come to class to have the first exposure to have the, the lecture, to have the PowerPoint presentation. So could you move those things or something or the reading outside of the classroom? What else could you use technology for? So one of the first things that occurred to me was that I could use technology for testing and assessment, which would do a couple of things. One is it would make more time in class, and the other is that I could give students other kinds of incentives to do it, uh, and I could do it more often. So in music, we used to give what are called drop the needle exams, where you come into class with a pile of records, you put on a record, you drop the needle, then you fuddle through your other, you put a different record on it, and you say, okay, so who's playing, right? What style is this, what is this? So we would, I would used to do this three, four times a semester, it would take a half an hour, and I'd have to grade all of them. So at some point, I realized when there was a new technology that I could make it click on the file. I could put it online, I could let students do it outside of classroom. That, led to a discussion with my Center for Teaching and Learning person about, well, but if a student memorizes all 350 clips that you've put online, isn't that cheating? And I said, you know, actually, I think that's called learning. And then I realized that, in fact, a game would work even better, where the students would do different levels of things. And so now you could take this device with you, your phone, your iPad with you all the time, uh, you have it with you, and you could when you wanted to, you're stuck on the subway, you got to play a few levels of the game. I just had to convert the levels back into grades. So that the whole metaphor for what you were doing inside and out of the classroom changed. So I was able to, because games are just little tests. A video game is just a series of little micro tests. So very low stakes, but they happen a lot, very often. Exactly the combination that we want. They just didn't need to happen in the class. So what I started to realize is that by using technology outside of the classroom, A, I could have more efficient learning outside of the classroom, and B, I'd have a lot more time in the classroom for the kinds of things that can only be done in the classroom. Face-to-face -face discussion, you know, confronting contradictions and, and assumptions. The things that we really enjoy most as teachers is not content delivery, it's getting inside a student's head, seeing how they think, having that interaction. So we've just found a, this technology actually gives us a way to have more time in the classroom for the things that most matter.